The last two types of functions under the marketing functions would be the exchange function and then the facilitating function. Let's talk about the exchange function. The exchange function is the act of buying and selling. And we all know this is very common in the agricultural world. Let's take for example a steer or just a weaned calf. So a calf, whenever it's weaned, is also often taken to a mo an auction barn and sold there. That's one sell. Then it's turned around and sold to a stalker or a backgrounder. That's two sales. That same animal is then distributed or sold to a feedlot. There's the third sale. Then to a packer. That's the fourth sale. Then that animal is then probably divided up and it might be sold to one meat processor. And that's, you know, the fifth sale. Or it might, or it's sold to one meat market. And then from there, that animal might be divided up and sold to multiple different grocery stores. Or, let's say it all does go to the same grocery store. That's the sixth sale. Chances are that animal then is all the co-products of that animal after slaughter is going to be sold to multiple, multiple families. Then the amount of sales become innumerous. So we have this buying and selling, these exchange functions are very common, and we found that they are very efficient and very cheap whenever we talk about in terms of agricultural marketing. How would you like it if every single animal that was sold within the United States required 30 minutes of haggling? According to the book, I believe 215 hogs are sold every minute within the United States on average. What if every hog sold took 30 minutes worth of haggling in order to get the price down? That becomes an impressive amount of time. So as a result, we've developed ways in the agricultural marketing sector to make this buying and selling very cheap and very efficient. And we've also done it in such a way where it reduces the number of transactions. And because of the way our marketing channel is set up, we can often take a group of hogs from a farmer and get it to a consumer with relatively low number of purchases. What if instead every one of the consumers, what if all of those middlemen were not there, all those finance or all those intermediaries were not there, and instead all of the customers, all of the consumers of pork would have to go to all of the individual farmers across the United States to buy their pork or buy their hogs directly from the farmer. It would be an impressive feat and it would be virtually impossible. But because of these exchange functions, because of the way the marketing channel is set up, we actually reduce the number of transactions, making this a more efficient and cheap process. Next we have the facilitating functions. The facilitating functions consist of items such as standardization and market intelligence. So standardization is a process of making sure that we have constant measures of quantity and quality for our agricultural commodities. This standardization is seen whenever we walk into a store and you pick up a slab of beef and they says that that slab of beef is either prime, choice, or select. That's a standardization. Or it's looking at whenever you talk about one bushel of wheat, for example. That's talking about a standardized quantity. So now we're standardizing things and making it the same. By standardizing it, it makes it more efficient. And it also reduces uncertainty. So let's say, for example, you have somebody in the plains of Texas, the high plains of Texas, is looking to buy a certain amount of grains, a certain amount of bushels of grain, in order to feed their cattle at the feedlot. Well, that particular Texas feedlot may not be buying wheat directly from people around them. Instead, they might be buying it from three states away, or they might be buying it from Kansas or someplace like that. Well, because of this standardization, that farmer or that farmer can sell their wheat directly to that uh, feedlot producer down in Texas from three states away by talking about what is the quality of that wheat and how much are they selling. If they didn't have the standardization, every time you want to go buy something, you would have to go out there and visually inspect it. But because of the standardization, that feedlot operator in Texas can be relatively sure that what they're buying from this person in Kansas is going to be what they, what they are expecting because they understand that it's a constant measure of that quality and quantity. The next thing is this market intelligence. Market intelligence is the gathering of data of sales, prices, and events uh, that can affect sales. So prices can be expected and realized prices. Those are constantly changing. They're also looking at how much, what is the volume of sales that are going on within this particular market. Now, typically, 
This market intelligence is being gathered by the federal government. The federal government is mainly the ones that are in charge of this standardization and of gathering this market intelligence. So then the information that they gather would be considered the data. Data is that raw information that is provided to you. Now, the next thing that we got to note is the difference between data and information. Data is that raw information that's provided, or raw data, raw numbers that are provided to you. The way you take those numbers and interpret that data, information is the interpretation of data. So data is just raw numbers with nothing done to them, whereas this information is the data interpreted for the benefit of an agricultural operation or for the benefit of anyone, for that matter. So by gathering this market intelligence, it more or less levels the playing field. It keeps everybody on the same page. That way, there's no one entity that can obtain a better information of the market. Everybody has the same market information because it is being provided by the federal government and everybody's on a level playing field, keeping basically corruption out of it. So then we also have this financing, financing and risk bearing as part of the facilitating functions. This financing and risk bearing also plays a very important role. Over $1 trillion is used to finance the agricultural industry each year. That's a lot of money that needs to be come up with, and that's being done through these financial intermediaries that are financing this agricultural operation. Another major aspect is this risk bearing. Risk bearing is trying to protect yourself from the gain or loss of external forces in the amount of in, in volume or in dollars. Everybody that's involved in the agricultural industry understands that there's risk that the price of the market may fall out. Or they understand that bad weather may cause them to reduce their amount of product to sell that year. That's a lot of risk. So there are this financing and risk bearing aspect, especially the risk bearing aspect, attempts to take some of that risk off of individual operations, agribusinesses ones that are facing this chance of a loss in the volume that they have or the amount, either through de product deterioration or something of that, of, of that nature. That's usually done by insurance agencies. So agricultural in insurance agencies often play a very critical role in absorbing some of that risk from the agribusinesses, so that way the agribusinesses can continue to operate without taking on near as much risk.